Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. We're ready to do the preliminary installation of our cylinder head. Here's our head. The first thing you do on the cylinder head is to install the head gaskets. So these are copper head gaskets, 60 thousandths thick, and they literally just slide in there and push them all the way in until they're flush against the upper part of the cylinder combustion chamber there. Do the same thing with the other one. Don't forget to put those in there because not only will it mess up your deck height, but it'll also uh, have a poor seal on your, uh, for compression on your cylinder head. So make sure those are in there. The heads come already assembled, so everything's ready to go when you get the head with your uh, Aero-V kit. Some of the heads that we ship might possibly have studs in these locations here for the intake manifold. Um, the current heads we're shipping use uh, cap screws in there. Either one will work. We have engines running in our fleet in both configurations. So whichever uh, set of heads you get, uh, you can go ahead and use them as is. Uh, or you can remove the studs if you'd rather use cap screws in that spot. Either way. So we get ready to put our cylinder on. Another thing to make sure you remember is to put the super tin in. This is what we call the super tin. It's uh, basically a lower baffle for cooling air to direct the cooling air around the lower part of the cylinder. Uh, it just snaps in. So it just goes right up under here and kind of spring snaps against the uh, cylinder hold down rods and it stays in there all by itself. It's a real easy thing to forget. You don't want to put your cylinder heads on and then uh, look at the bench and find your super tins laying there. So always remember to uh, put those in there. We're also going to have push rod tubes that we're going to install. There's four on each side. Uh, before we install the push rod tubes, we want to make sure to put the uh, little uh, gaskets on them, the little seals, or little uh, uh, neoprene seals or nylon. And uh, they come in your full gasket set. Sometimes they're red, sometimes they're white. They're always this conical shape and they just push on the end of the uh, push rod tube. So make sure that each push rod tube has a uh, seal on each end. And you're ready to go on that. What I usually do is I'll start my longer studs in the holes and get the cylinder head started on. Slide it on part way and just kind of support it there. And then you got to reach underneath and get the push rod tubes aligned. It takes a little bit of messing around to get them all lined up in there. An extra set of hands at this point wouldn't be a bad thing. You have a helper that you can get to, to help you out. Just Get them temporarily lined up in there. Once you get them all lined up, you can make sure that all your all of your studs are lined up, and slide the head all the way in. Push rod tubes will tend to fight you a little bit. Make sure they are fully aligned. The push rod tubes are uh, expanded. They have those little uh, uh, expansion areas on the ends and so they're longer than they need to be and the, they kind of get spring loaded as you tighten the head down so um, that's what gives them a good seal so they will uh, uh, fight you a little bit at first. You just want to make sure that um, you know that they're going to push against that head and kind of hold it away from the cylinders a little bit so be prepared for that. There's these big thick washers that come with your uh, hold down rod kit. The, the rod kit comes with all the cylinder hold down rods and also comes with the uh, nuts and washers to install. We're going to put one on here just to keep the cylinder from falling off of there, the cylinder head. Run it down by hand just to get it started. And then I'm going to put a nut and a washer on each 
stud. We have our head temporarily uh, finger tighted on there and all the uh, nuts are started on the studs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a preliminary torquing of the head just to get it seated on the cylinders properly. And then we're gonna mark some studs for trimming. There's three studs that have to be trimmed in length uh, on the Aero-V engine. These two center top ones here will be too long and they'll hit the uh, intake manifold elbow if you don't trim those. And then on each side there's one stud uh, it's as you look at the head it's the far right hand stud on each side uh, that's actually underneath the rocker shaft when you install the rocker arms so you'll need to trim that so that it doesn't hit the rocker shaft but we have to get the head seated on the uh, on the cylinders uh, down far enough to uh, check and see how much trimming we have to do so my next operation is going to be to take our our torque wrench we're going to set it to a preliminary setting of 10 pound feet And we're gonna, there's a torque sequence you have to use on these. Uh, this preliminary torque, uh, you alternate across the bottom row first and then move to the top row. So we start in the center, we just crank it down. Once we get that one down to 10, we go to the other center one right next to it, spin it down, bring it to 10, then we'll go to the one to the far right, bring it down to 10, then go to the one to the far left, bring it down, then we'll go to these top ones, starting in the center again, 10, Go to the other center one, 10, cross back over, 10,
There. Now we have a preliminary torque of 10 pound feet on all of our hold down rods. That gives us an opportunity to check these rods that need to be trimmed and see how much we need to trim off. We can see we're going to have to take off about a quarter of an inch off of each of those. And I, you can't see it on the camera, but I'm going to look in here and I'm going to, looks like about the same on that one down there. So we'll end up trimming about a quarter of an inch off of each of these and a quarter of an inch off of this one down here. Once we do that, I'll remove the nuts, just use the, the nut itself to clean those threads up for me. Then I'll go ahead and reinstall the nuts, retorque this to 10 pound feet, and then there's a final torque setting of 18 pound feet that we'll do in a, uh, a different pattern, which I'll show you after we get our rods trimmed.